Hello, I'm Mark Lingwood of the St. Mary's Department of Chemistry, and I'm here to talk about how to use a burette. So a burette is a measurement device that's designed to be used while you're performing a chemical reaction known as a titration. So you'll have a reactant down here in, for example, an Erlenmeyer flask sitting next to my giant microphone because my lapel mic isn't here yet. So you have a reactant down here, and you have the other reactant up here, say A and B. And you're trying to add just the right amount of B into your flask until reactant A is entirely consumed. So we want to precisely know where the level of liquid in this burette starts and where it finishes. So for example, here's the starting measurement. I'll zoom in on it for you. All right, so when you're measuring, the first thing you have to do is move your eyes so that they're on the level of the liquid in the burette. And so you can tell you're there when the line, the bigger line, looks straight. Because if you look at the ones, oh, let's say the ones farther down, you can see the front edge and the back edge of this line. Whereas when your eye level is around here, you can see that, well, the front edge and the back edge of the line from either side of this burette are right in front of the other. And so then you know that your eyes are on the level of the liquid. So we're good there. And then now the other thing you have to keep in mind is that the scale is upside down compared to graduated cylinders and other things you're used to using. So the 11 is on top and the 12 is below. So you have to keep that in mind that it's 11, 11.1, 11.2, 11.3 as you go down. The other thing to keep in mind is that you measure from the bottom of the meniscus because the water is polar and the glass is polar, the water climbs up the edges of the glass and makes this dent in the middle. And all of our glassware is calibrated to read from the bottom of the meniscus. So basically you just take the lowest point um, where you see it here. Now it looks black at the moment because of how the shadows are playing on it. If I were to take a white piece of paper or a paper towel, which I have handy, and put it behind it, you can change how it appears whether it has a shadow or whether it doesn't. And it doesn't matter what you do as long as you're consistent. So record your initial measurement. I'll zoom in on it even better here. Okay, now that we've recorded the initial position, we will add liquid from our burette into the reaction. And so you twist the valve right here and the liquid starts adding. Normally you wouldn't go this fast, you'd go slowly because you don't want to blow past the end point of your titration, which is when you have this um, right amount of B added to A. But I don't want to waste your time, so I'll imagine we're doing a reaction and then as you get a little closer to the end, you're going to slow down. So I would slow this down. And then as you get really close to the end, you'll start going drop by drop. So you can do that by twisting this, you go drop by drop, and then suddenly, oh great, my reaction is done. And now you'll want to record an ending value. So you know where you started, you know where you ended, and then you'll calculate the difference to discover how much liquid you added. So I'll scoot this down and then I'll zoom in so you can see the final measurement. And there you are. That's a quick introduction on how to use your burette. Enjoy your chemistry lab. And great. Thanks for watching. Enjoy chemistry. <laughs> Outtakes.